Good morning everyone. Today I am going to explain about harmonic distortion. Yes, this is a topic under distortion in power amplifiers. For any amplifier, it may be a normal voltage amplifier means the small signal amplifier or this power amplifier means for large signal amplifier. You are giving an AC input signal. It has some amplitude, some frequency and some phase. So ultimately the output must have same shape and same frequency and same phase. But amplitude because it is amplifier, amplitude may be deferred but it should preserve the shape, frequency and phase. There should not be any distortion in the signal. Means there should not be any change in frequency, phase and shape. If there are any changes in all these three, we can say the waveform is distorted. So now the distortions for power amplifier output can be considered in three ways. First one is amplitude distortion. Second one is frequency distortion. And third one is phase distortion. Remember amplitude distortion means not increasing or decreasing the amplitude. Okay, it is the shape distortion. It is the change in shape. Okay. Now I'll start with the third one. Phase distortion. See what is this phase? I'll give you two signals. This is the first signal and this is the second signal. Let be B1, let be B2. Assume that these two are our voice signals. And we are hearing these two signals from the loudspeaker. Can you observe any difference while listening? We can't. Because we can see the phase difference but we can't hear the phase difference. The information carried by this signal and the information carried by this signal are same. But it is having some lagging. That's all. But while listening we can hear the same information. So as the phase distortion is not detectable by human ear. Yes, we can ignore the phase distortion in the case of power amplifiers. Okay, next. Because, see this, uh, why I am telling this? Output of the power amplifier always feeds the loudspeaker. Always we are listening from the loudspeaker. So, while listening, we can't detect this phase difference. Okay, so we can ignore the phase difference. Now, coming to the frequency distortion. Yes, in the features of power amplifiers, I explain you one point, all these power amplifiers are audio frequency power amplifiers. Means the, the frequency is very less. As the frequency is very less, even though there exists some distortion in frequency, you can neglect it. But if the frequency is very high, a small change in frequency gives a large change in information. So, we can't neglect at that time. But we can neglect here as the frequency is small. Okay. So now the last one is amplitude distortion which is very very important. This in this power amplifiers I will get amplitude distortion because of the non-linearity of the transistor we are using. Okay. And the amplitude distortion present in the power amplifier output is called harmonic distortion. Okay. So now this is very important, amplitude distortion is very very important, we must consider it because if there are any disturbances, any distortions in the change of the signal, automatically we are going to lose some information or we are going to get some wrong information. So we have to take care of it, okay. So now I will explain about harmonic distortion. It's harmonic distortion in the power amplifiers is due to the non-linearity of the transistor, okay. The reason is, when by non-linearity, there exists non-linear relationship between voltage and current. We all know transistor is a non-linear device. Diode is a non-linear device. The in VI characteristics of diode are not like, are not linear. Because I is equal to I naught into E power V by eta V T minus 1. Okay. I is equal to I naught into E power V by eta V T minus 1. And if you observe the characteristics, the characteristics are like this. This is V and this is I. Means the voltage and current are not linear. Hence the diode is said to be a non-linear element. Transistor is made up of two diodes back to back. 
Okay, theoretically we can say that. So transistor is also a nonlinear device. And if you recollect the characteristics, yes, these are the input characteristics. And these are the output characteristics of the transistor. Fine. So there also the current and voltages are not uh, varying in linear fashion. So that is the reason the transistor is said to be a nonlinear device. What will happen if the transistor is said to be a nonlinear device? So let us assume that. Yes, what is the input current? Input current IB. Assume this input current as IBM cos omega t. You can assume even sin omega t also. Then, what about the output current IC? As not only the voltage and current of uh, the transistor, even the input and output are also. See this, this is the transistor. We are giving input and we are taking output. Transistor is nonlinear. Fine. So, input and output are also vary in nonlinear fashion. That's all. Very simple. So, now your input current is IBM cos omega t. Now, what is the output current IC? So, now you can assume IC in a nonlinear assumption. Okay. So, what is IC? Yes, you can assume like that. G1 IB plus G2 IB square. Suppose if it is simply IC is equal to G1 IB. Tell me what is that linearity concept first. See this? This is Y equal to MX. That is linear. But Y equal to MX is square. It's not linear. Then Y equal to MX plus some uh, NX square. It's also non-linear. Right? So here also it is. I say is G1 IB plus G2 IB square. Now if I substitute is G1 IBM cos omega t plus G2 IBM cos omega t whole square. So that is G1 IBM cos omega t plus G2 IBM square. Yes, you can write cos square omega t as 1 plus cos 2 omega t by 2. So, total it is G1 IBM cos omega t plus G2 IBM square by 2 plus G2 IBM square cos 2 omega t by 2. Okay. Then if you observe, what is your input? The input is with the frequency omega. But what is your output? It consists of two frequencies, omega and 2 omega. Okay? So now, this term gives the distortion. This gives the distortion. Okay, suppose if I assume, let be G3 IBQ. What we are going to get? We are going to get something, something and then we are going to get cos 3 omega t term. Now this 3 omega term will give the distortion. Okay. So this distortion which is due to the 2 omega, 3 omega, etc. n omega is called harmonic distortion. Okay. See here, you are given a signal input signal with the frequency omega your output must consist of only that omega term then we can say there is no distortion but here we are getting two omega and three omega terms which leads to the distortion that distortion is called harmonic distortion okay why the term harmonic say this omega omega term is called fundamental component 2 omega is called second harmonic. 3 omega is called third harmonic. Etc. N omega is called nth harmonic. So that is the reason this distortion due to this high frequency terms is called harmonic distortion. We can't call it as first harmonic. Harmonics means must be multiple with some factor. Then, yes, how this uh, uh, this presence of harmonics 
effects will cause distortion. I'll draw the figures. Let be fundamental. Okay, V1. I'll draw second harmonic. Second harmonic is having frequency of 2 omega. 2 omega frequency means time period must be half. As frequency and time are inversely proportional. Since this is the time period, this total is the time period. One time period. You must divide it into 2. Okay. So, what is your signal? Second harmonic signal. This is the second harmonic signal. Okay. Frequency is double but the time period gets half. Then. What about third harmonic? Third harmonic means 3 omega. Means this total time period must be divided by 3. Okay. So, I'll uh, do three divisions. This is the signal, A3. Okay. So, now, if you see the output, output consists of these three. Means these three gets mixed. It seems to be the top is fundamental. Under that fundamental, first is second harmonic. Under that, there is third harmonic. Okay. So, this total mixing of all these components gives a distortion. Suppose if your output consists of these three, the total output seems to be, yes, this is the total output. If you see there exists distortion. Okay. And another important, very important point is, among all harmonics, the second harmonic component is having highest amplitude. This is having highest amplitude. Okay. And the third harmonic is having amplitude less than this and fourth having less than third harmonic like that. If the number of harmonic increases, the amplitude decreases. So, in the harmonic distortion concept, the main problem is with the second harmonic distortion. Okay. Now suppose V1 is amplitude of fundamental. V2 amplitude of second harmonic. When percentage second harmonic distortion is percentage V2 is more B2 by B1 in 200. Same way, if you want to write for percentage D3, then that is mod D3 by mod B1 into 100. And so on you can write. Therefore, the total harmonic distortion, okay, percentage D is equal to root D2 square plus d3 square plus etc dn square. If your output consists of uh, many harmonic components, then the total harmonic distortion formula is this. Okay. Another point is, in terms of uh, your imax, imin and icq, as, uh, as the second harmonic distortion is the dominant one, as I am giving the formulas for b1, b1 is I max minus I min by 2 and B2 is I max plus I min minus 2 ICQ by 4. Okay, these are the derived formulas. As the second hormonal distortion is the dominant one, use these uh, uh, two formulas in problems. Uh, we know the I max, I min and ICQ from the graphs of the power amplifiers. Okay. Why I am telling this harmonic distortion after class A? Because from class B onwards, the amplifiers consists of some distortion. Okay. Power output of distortion is PAC is, what is PAC? IM square RL by 2. 
I am as uh, I peak to peak by 2. I peak to peak is I max minus I min. I max minus I min is 2 I B min. So if you substitute S I am in terms of B1, I will get it as half B1 square R L. Okay, then power output with the distortion is a PACD. Yes, if you see the power output without distortion, it is in terms of the fundamental. But if you have distortion in the output, then the power output due to distortion consists of all the harmonic component amplitude values. So you can write it as half V1 square RL plus half V2 square RL plus half V3 square RL etc. So now take half B1 square RL common. It will be 1 plus B2 by B1 whole square, B3 by B1 whole square. What is half B1 square? It is PAC of 1 plus. What is B2 by B1? Yes. D2 square. What is B3 by B1? D3 square. Okay. So you can write PACD as PAC into what is D2 square plus D3 square etc. DN square it is D square. So 1 plus D square. So this is the relation between the power output with distortion and power output without distortion. Rest of the amplifiers consists of distortion. In every power amplifier we are going to analyze this harmonic distortion. Okay. So thank you very much.